Welcome to the French Huguenot Church of Charleston. Uh, this September 24th, I'd like to start our announcements today first by recognizing the loss of a church member, Linda Eisman, passed away this week. She was an elder and valued member of our church. Um, so our prayers are with the Eisman family this week. Uh, for those of you who are visiting, uh, we have a little red pew bo uh, booklet in your pew box. Feel free to leave that with us. The altars on the church are given in the glory of God in John and Connor Gant. Um, we will have a collation following today's service. Uh, we want to thank everyone who participated and donated items for last week's collation. Uh, John Painter is leading a study on the book of Job beginning Sunday, October 1st. This will lead at 9.30 uh, at 44 Queen. Uh, Reverend Woody is about to be, or has begun a six-week study of the book of Ephesians that will go until October 19th. Uh, for those of you who are interested, this afternoon, uh, some members of our choir are giving a concert the King's Counterpoint Vocal Ensemble. Uh, this will be today at 3 p.m. <clears throat> um, coming up in a few weeks, we're having a grand family event on October the 7th. This is an opportunity to bring uh, family members, young and old, together uh, here at the church. Um, Anna Hilton and Reverend Woody are uh, doing outreach with parents on Wednesday, September 27th. We're trying to get more younger folks and family into our church, and this is a good opportunity. Um, and then if you have a member who's a little bit older and in college, the Huguenot Church is looking to do care packages for those um, away, so feel free to submit names and we will get a, a package together. Um, that concludes the announcements. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. pray. O Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we have come together for the public sanctification of this Lord's Day to offer unto Thee our praises and our prayers and to hear Thy holy word. Thou hast promised to hearken favorably unto all those who call upon Thee in the name of Thy Son. We therefore beseech Thee to look down upon us in mercy and to purify our thoughts and affections that we may render unto Thee an acceptable service. Great God, we humble ourselves before Thee. We adore Thy majesty. We extol Thy wisdom, Thy power, and Thy goodness, which appear with such brightness in the marvelous works of creation and redemption. We acknowledge Thy tender love and the manifold favors, spiritual and temporal, which continually receive at Thy hand. But we praise Thee more especially with all Christians who are assembled this day, that Thou didst send Thy Son into the world to save us, and that he rose from the dead for our justification. We bless thee that thou hast given us by his glorious resurrection so lively a hope of everlasting life. O God, thy glory is great in all thy churches, and the praise of thy name is heard in all the assemblies of the saints. May our thanksgivings ascend to the throne, make us worthy to be partakers of the resurrection of the just, and to the, of the glory of the kingdom of heaven where Jesus Christ hath entered in as our forerunner, where he liveth and reigneth, where he is adored and glorified, with thee and the Holy Ghost, God bless forever. Amen. 
Please stand as we sing hymn number 230, The Church is One Foundation. the Ten Commandments of the Law of God as they are written in the 20th chapter of the book of Exodus. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make into the, unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto them, uh, thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take thy Lord thy, of the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh thy name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh is the day of the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hear also what the Lord Jesus Christ saith in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Dearly beloved, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess ourselves, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, let us humbly confess our sins. You may be seated. <clears throat> o Lord God, eternal and almighty Father, we confess before thy divine majesty that we are miserable sinners, born in corruption and iniquity, prone to evil, and of ourselves incapable of any good. We acknowledge that we transgress in various ways thy holy commandments, so that we draw down on ourselves through thy righteous judgment, condemnation, and death. We are, O Lord, under heartfelt sorrow for having offended thee, and we implore thy grace to relieve our wretchedness. Vouchsafe, O most gracious God and merciful Father, to have compassion on us. In the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, pardon our sins, give us the graces of the Holy Spirit, and increase them day by day, to the end that heartily acknowledging our unworthiness and forsaking our sins, we may be filled with that godly sorrow, which worketh repentance into salvation, and may bring forth fruits of righteousness acceptable to thee, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture is taken uh, from Exodus chapter 16. It's found in page 66 of your pew Bible. We are reading uh, verses 7 through uh, and 11 through 16. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel mur murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, where we sat by the flesh pots, and where we did eat bread in the full, for ye have brought us here forth into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I shall rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto the children of Israel at evening time, Then shall you know that the Lord had brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning, then you shall see the glory of the Lord. For he hath heard your murmuring, mur murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against us also? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I heard the murmuring of the children of Israel, speaking to them, saying, At evening you shall eat flesh, and the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that even at evening time the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning the dew lay round about the host. 
And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, the face of the wilderness, there existed some small around the things, as small as the hour frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is a manna, for they won't not, I did not know what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Our next hymn is hymn 402 in the supplement, We Believe in the True God. May we stand? second lesson is from the New Testament, Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16, may be found on page 840 in your Q, Q Bible. <clears throat> For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is in ha as a householder, and went out early in the morning to hire laborers in his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he gave them and sent them into his garden. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and so whatever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour, and did likewise. And then about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? And they said unto him, Because no man had hired us. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatever is right, they shall ye, ye receive. And when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came, they were hired about the eleventh hour. They received every man one penny. And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, Thou hast brought us for one hour, thou hast made them equal unto us, and have borne the burden, and what we have borne the burden and the heat of the day. And he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong, did thou not agree with me for a penny? Take what thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto the last, even as unto thee. 
Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine evil I evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many shall be called, but few are chosen. The pastor asks that we keep in mind Proverbs 7, uh, verse, and this reads as following, as a person thinketh in his heart, so is he. Thank you. Let thy mercy shine upon us. O God, make clean our hearts within us. O Lord God, we render thanks unto thee that thou hast called us unto the knowledge and the profession of the Christian faith. We beseech thee to preserve and increase it in us to the end that continually steadfast in the same we may sincerely unite in the confession of the Church Universal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost and born under the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, he died, he was buried. He went into the place of the departed spirits third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, I believe in the Holy Church Universal, the communion of saints, the remission of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. O Lord our God, creator and father of the human race, who has commanded that prayer and supplication be made for all mankind, we offer under thee our intercessions for the peace of the world and the happiness and salvation of all people. Deliver, we beseech thee, O Lord, from spiritual blindness, all the nations that still sit in darkness. Thou didst so love the world that thou gavest thine only Son to die as a propitiation not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. Thou hast taught us that it came to be a light unto the Gentiles, and to bring salvation unto the ends of the earth, and that there is none other name under heaven given among mortals, whereby we may be saved. Grant, O Almighty God and merciful Father, that all of our fellow people may be gathered unto the name of thy Lord, to the end of the... Of to the end that all nations may know and adore thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. O Lord, who art the source of all lawful power and the fountain of all true wisdom in the counsels of people, we pray thee for all who in authority throughout the world. Thou hast taught us in thy holy word that thou dost govern the nations upon the earth and that rulers should serve and obey thee. Vouchsafe then, O most mighty God, a knowledge of thyself to such as know thee not, and give thy grace unto all that ruling in thy fear they may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with thee. O God of mercy, have pity on all those who are suffering by war, pestilence, or any other scourge, and all who are in affliction. We commend to thy care the widow and the orphan, the poor and the stranger, all who are in peril by land, by water, by air, and all who endure persecution of the gospel, all who are distressed in the mind, the infirm, the sick, and the dying, comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, 
and give them happy issue out of all their trials and afflictions. Now let us humbly uh, have our silent prayer. Fably hear us, O God, graciously all who have in this time offered up their prayers unto thee. Reject not the supplications of the servants, but grant us in the blessings we have asked of thee, in all of which are necessity for us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we offer up our prayers. Amen. Now let us hymn, sing the sermon hymn number 64, Abide With Me, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Thing like me you probably said to yourself at some time hindsight is 2020 and I found it to be true if I'd done this if I'd done that if I had not said this if I had not said that my life would be very different I hear this from others all the time mistakes I've made choices I've made or didn't make, indecisions. And I found this, if we dwell on the past of what might have been, we will become frustrated, we might become depressed, and I can promise you, you'll become angry. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times here in 41 years, you can't live life backwards, you've got to live it forward. But if we can learn from the past, if we can learn from the present, if we can learn from the future, 
we will find the secret. We will find the secret to change everything. If somehow we can change our attitude about the past, about the present, and about the future, I can promise you it will change your life and it will change mine. The writer of the Proverbs sums it up in just one sentence. As a person thinketh, so is he. A few years ago, I read this article in the Los Angeles Times. It was a story of something that happened at the airport there. A man who was a bully was standing in a line that was moving very slowly. And he elbowed his way from his place near the back of the line to the front of the line. He got to the counter. He exclaimed to the airline person there, I want a ticket to Washington, D.C., and I want it now. He pounded his fist on the counter. And she said, very calmly, sir, I saw where your place was in line. You will need to return to your place in line. He didn't like that, so he said, do you know who I am? And she very calmly picked up her microphone, clicked on the intercom of the airport. There's a man at the American Airlines ticket who doesn't know who he is. If anyone here can come and maybe identify him, Maybe, just maybe, that's how we handle bullies. It's an attitude that someone comes at us, irritates us, and we can handle it in a positive way. This impatient man, he returned to his place and the line and the people in the line applauded his decision. In life, if there's one thing that I hate, it's waiting in lines. I don't know how it is with you. But it gives meaning to me, this story, when Jesus says, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Is there anyone here who likes to wait? Whether it's at the airport whether it's a car service center, a fast food restaurant, or even the doctor's office. We like appointments, and we like these appointments to be honored on time. Something about those signs, first come, first serve, just doesn't seem to work anymore with a lot of us. Lord knows I hate lines. I was getting my truck serviced and I was impatient and they had music playing over the intercom and I thought to myself, I know that song. And it was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and he was singing their song, Wait. And the words go like this, every day you get one more yard, you live it on faith, you take it to the heart Waiting is the hardest part. Don't let it kill you, baby. Don't let it kill you. Owen read to us two stories this morning. And if you look in certain verse, certain versions where it says murmuring, and certain verses it said the people complained. They complained, and that was their attitude. I don't know how that you... Hamill, the challenges of your life, how that you come to the point where you can just deal with what we have to deal with out on the street. I know some people, to change their attitude, see therapists, and I think that's wonderful. But for years, how I've changed my attitude, I go to barbershops. Barbershops are my therapy. Cleve and I used to go to Farley's up in Hanahan, and you'd sit and wait for two hours, and you get to know everyone in there, and if you wanted to register to vote, you could register to vote at Farley's. Farley's is no longer in business. 
So when I go to another city, I'll Google barbershops. I visited one in Gloucester, Virginia some years ago. It was very dated. Nothing had changed in probably 40 years. I walked in and she had a stack of eight track cassettes on top of an old television that didn't work. I looked over to my right and she had a hot plate and on the hot plate she had a pot and in the pot she had a can of shaving cream. I thought this is unusual. She was warming the shaving cream in the hot pot. And all I could think about was, you know, what if that shaving cream burst? We'd have us a shaving cream party and all of a sudden I forgot all my troubles. I think the best story that I ever heard about barbershops was about those two guys who moved to a new town. And the first thing they did was go to the barbershop. And they asked the barber, told him they were new to town, asked him what kind of people lived in this town. And the barber, being a very wise counselor, said, well, what kind of people live where you came from? And the first man said, they were the scum of the earth. They were selfish people. They were angry people. They were people you didn't want to be around. And the wise barber said, well, you'll find people like that here. Another man came in, new to town, asked the same question. What kind of people live here? And the barber said, well, what kind of people live where you moved from? He said, they were some of the most caring, gracious, giving people you have ever met in your life. He said, their attitudes made you want to be around them. And the barber said, well, you'll find people like that here. As a man thinketh, so is he. This week, I close with this. Some of us have waited for maybe three months to see a very important man in this community. Probably one of the biggest developers in the community. He's a busy man. We were presenting him a portrait of a chapel down at May River, the May River Chapel. On the advice of Kathy Crawford, we dedicated it to his mother. We had 15 minutes. We had to wait about 15 minutes. We had 15 minutes with him. He looked after we uncovered this portrait and he said, that's absolutely beautiful. And then when he saw that we dedicated it to his mother, he talked about the influence she had on his life. He said she lived by the five W's, worship, work, walk, water, wine. Not bad. Amen.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.